and welcome to the webinar. I am your moderator, George Zarebski, and today we have with us Candice and Mark. Hey, guys. Good morning. All right, off the bat, I want to uh, apologize for last week. We had a bit of echo. Well, I should say I had a bit of echo, some technical difficulties when trying a new platform, but we've got all that ironed out now, we hope. But uh, just like last week, if you guys do hear anything funny, please let us know. Today, we're going to be talking about homework mode, uh, doing a little bit of recap of the things we talked about last week, uh, since that one was so horrible. <laughs> and then we're going to talk about some, some upcoming things with Aries, uh, let you guys know what we've been working on, what you can expect to see soon. And at the end of our little chat, we'll open it up to questions. So if you're watching on Facebook, please go ahead and leave a uh, question in the comment area. And if you're on YouTube, there's a little chat window, either to the right or below the video. Uh, go ahead and leave your question in there, and we will answer all questions before we take off. So without further ado, let's go to you, Candice. What do you want to talk about this morning? Good morning. So I'm I'm just trying to settle into my multitasking here this morning because I'm prepping my notes for this presentation and then I'm watching our Facebook feed to watch for comments. So I feel a bit distracted, but let's get to it. Um, so what am I talking about today? Well, I'm gonna review a little bit of where we are, uh, our recent updates, and then talk a little bit about where we're going with some of our upcoming future updates. So last week, we did talk about homework mode and I want to just review that a little bit so if uh, if George will take us through the display on the phone of uh, where do we find homework mode in Aries? And absolutely. so, oh, go ahead. No, absolutely. I'm, I'm right here with you. Okay. And uh, so homework mode falls under the user settings. So in the Aries app, you're going to either need to set up a user or go uh, find the user that you will be putting homework mode uh, settings to apply the settings to. So once you get to your user, we've just added it as a little toggle button um, right underneath the profile image there. And then you just pretty easy tap to turn it on. You'll get a notification that says homework mode is on. And then we have a little and then tap to turn it off. And again, you'll get a notification that homework mode is off. So that's my part with the um, the UI of where to find homework mode. I will turn it over to Mark to talk a little bit more about what homework mode does behind the scenes. Awesome. So from the UI perspective, can you un homework mode the same way that you can unpause from the home screen? Not at this time. So it's okay. just under the user settings. Yes, yeah, so this is a new feature. Sounds like we still got some improvements to make there and on the technical side we got some improvements to make too so version one as candace said we are blocking all games so if your child plays league of legends world of warcraft xbox playstation that stuff's all going to get blocked by the current version of the homework mode um, what won't get blocked is stuff like facebook and youtube so in the future we're going to block that stuff too uh, but we thought that getting homework mode out and usable to block games as a version one was more important than getting it perfect for, for our first release. So as we continue to improve and evolve the product, um, we're going to add more stuff that gets blocked. And if you have any suggestions on what should be blocked, let us know. But other than that, um, version one is available today. It blocks games. And in the future, as we... Um, get more details on, on which stuff we should block, we'll block more stuff. Okay, yeah, so I have been using this on our test servers for uh, over the weekend. And just as a use case scenario, uh, a little feedback I've got. So my kids, seven and under, and none of them really play, well, none of them play games that would fit the category of what homework mode is blocking. Uh, they're mostly on tablets or on their laptop, but it's mostly, uh, there's some point and click interaction. They're not really loading. Actually, they're Chromebooks. They're not, they're not loading any games. Everything they do is HTML based. So they still have access to those things. They were able to <clears throat> play whatever uh, HTML5 games that they had, uh, whatever games were on the app. Um, but for those kids that are older, or you know, maybe your kids are playing Xbox online, uh, Minecraft, things like that, this is what that's gonna block. Is that right, Mark? You got it exactly. 
Okay. Yep. So awesome. And so I will throw this nugget out there. What I, and I know we've talked about this uh, behind the scenes a little bit as well, is the ability to kind of just like whitelist Google um, or, or a few things so that they can do homework, research, that type of stuff and not have access to the, to the YouTubes and the other things. So looking forward to our version two as well. Um, and I think we've gotten some feedback already, haven't we, Candice, for the homework version that we have out now with uh, some yes. of our users? So um, with our Aries uh, beta testers and our current Aries users, we have a community uh, Facebook group. And so we have been getting some awesome feedback from our current users saying things like Snapchat is a big one that I've seen, um, you know, a few things like that. So I think that having the ability to whitelist blacklist will be a, a big asset in the future so that parents can really pick and choose what they're allowing or disallowing. Yeah, so the trick, um, again, for you guys watching, is to make it easy to do. And we, the whole point of Aries is we want it to be super user friendly. We don't want it to be cumbersome. We don't want you to have to spend a half hour getting into Aries to try to set up things and configure. We want it to be all quick, on the fly type stuff. Uh, so you don't have to have a lot of engagement unless you're actively wanting to pause a device or check a history, uh, things like that. So speaking of history, I might've let the cat out of the bag there. Anything you wanna to add to that, Candace? So, yep, um, I was just gonna mention a few things about what we're working on uh, with Aries. So we do have some bug fixes that we're uh, addressing, and then we are working a little bit more on polish and shine on our user interface to make sure that it's, it's as easy and user-friendly as it can be. Um, and then, as George mentioned, our new features. So history um, per device is one of the, the features that we're working on, and then broadband usage per device as well. And so just to give you an idea of what this is going to look like, we have a, a demo on our test server that I think George will bring up here. Um, and so you would go under a device. At this point, we just have it under, we're working with just work on the device. And then eventually we'll get to where you have a summary per user. Um, but at the device level, we have a, a link that goes to a page called history. And so this will look something um, similar to this page here where it, uh, sorry, I was just looking to see, yep where you have a graph or a chart to show you kind of overall usage, main usage for what we call the top talkers. So that would be um, in our first version, and I think Mark can talk to this, that we're going to actually show you uh, the segments of history. So Mark, I'll turn it over to you to explain that a little more. Sure, so Aries features get approved daily. Um, some stuff flies under the hood because it's minor improvements. Other stuff's pretty major. Version one of this feature is going to say, hey, here's here's web traffic, here's encrypted web traffic, maybe here's League of Legends, here's World of Warcraft. But we're not going to break down the web traffic. So stuff like Facebook, YouTube, Snapchat is all going to be bundled together for version one. But in version two and in, and in future versions, we're going to break stuff down as much as we can to give you better details on all of the things that are happening with that device. And then like Candace said, once we got it nailed down on the um, device um, analytics, we'll aggregate that stuff up and say, hey, you, here's how your user looks. Okay, so basically we're gonna get a snapshot of the most frequently uh, accessed sites, but it's not gonna give all the minor details because I don't know if, if people have noticed this, but if you go to most web pages, like say Facebook, Facebook, for example, you're actually, your browser is pulling in more than just facebook.com. It's pulling in ads from here and, and other, you know, websites from there. They have their images sourced from different servers all over the world. So you're actually pulling in hundreds of links, literally. Um, and so there's no point in feeding you all of that information. So what Mark's saying is we're going to aggregate that and say, this much time was spent on Facebook, this much time was spent on YouTube and not go into the you know finite details of exactly which links were where. And it's again, to give that situational awareness of where the time is being spent, if you're interested in that, but also <clears throat> you can see which devices were doing the most talking as well. So you get that, um, that 
user overview, if you will. Um, and again, we're trying to make sure we implement that smart um, and give you guys an option to not have to see that if you don't want to. Uh, actually, Candace, do you want to speak on that a little bit, the uh, privacy potential uh, concerns with that? Right, so this is something that you will have to go into the app and turn on. Um, we're not gonna store that data by default. So you'll have to just, we'll I'm sure talk about it when we get it live, where to go in, turn the settings on, um, maybe even make it a per user setting that you turn on for that user's devices. And then we keep that data, but it's definitely a tool. So it's a an analytical tool that is say, for example, you have a security system and all of a sudden you're really noticing your security system spiking in usage. Um, there might be an issue there. And so that's that's one of the tools that we're giving you to to help manage your your internet connection. Yeah, that reminds me of one of the analogies I used early on. You know, what if the uh the dog feeder, you know, all the internet of things devices we have now, and if somebody codes something and it goes crazy and all of a sudden it's sucking down 10 megabytes a, a, a day for no reason, you know, it's just not realistic. You're gonna be notified of that now. You're gonna be able to see wow, should my Nest thermostat really be sending this much data back and forth to Google or my Vizio TV or whatever? So it's just another tool to give you that visibility for how your devices are acting as well as the users that own those devices. So that's that's going to be pretty awesome. Exactly. And, and along those lines too, um, so one of the other features is the broadband usage. So again, um, this will be similar to our current usage page where we show you what devices are active and passing traffic. Um, but this will be a little bit more of a history for you, especially like in George's case where you're metered on your broadband usage. This is a tool that might help you with that. Um, but I'll let Mark actually talk a little bit more about what what you can expect to see in the in the new pages coming. Sure. So right now, as you can see on that usage page, um, you're getting a one second snapshot of how your network looks right now. And, you know, you can refresh it and get details for a different second, but it's still a snapshot in time. Um, we think it's a lot more useful to have, you know, what has been going on for the last hour, for the last day, for the last week and month. So we're going to add in the ability to, you know, look a little um, time machine back in time and say, hey, how have things looked? Has it been mostly healthy this month? Or has this month used, you know, double what previous months have used or, or weeks or hours? And so you just get a better idea of, hey, I don't know why, maybe I need to look into this. Something happens every day at 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. And I know that, you know, we got the kids all going out to wrestling and Cub Scouts and whatever other other activities you've got so nothing should be doing that like george said you'll be able to to get that level of detail here in this area of the of the app yeah and just to hone in on on another aspect candace said i am metered so i get um a finite amount of data to use per month uh, before i get dropped to low speed kind of like uh, most cell phone data plans right you'll get the lte or high-end speeds until you reach that cap and then they drop you down to like dial up speeds. It's, it's almost, you can't even use it, right? So I live in that world with my home internet. And um, prime example, just last month we went over and I wasn't able to immediately look and see which device or devices were doing all the talking. Uh, fortunately, just through communication realized, yeah, that there was a lot of streaming going on. It was kind of our Netflix month, if you will. But uh, this, it, that's where it would be invaluable for me to be able to see, okay, this device has been doing a crazy amount of talking. So again, maybe it's just this device has gone haywire, or maybe I need to talk to my kid about the amount of time they spend on YouTube, you know? So uh, definitely another very useful tool there, uh, especially for people that are being bandwidth capped, as it were. All right, uh, Candace, let me take it back to you. I see um, maybe you want to speak about or did you have some more stuff for the uh, core functionality or the way forward? I think that wraps up all the features that we're working on right now. Um, if any of our users uh, in the community want to post or give us a shout out on anything that they would love to see, um, we love to hear the feedback and get new ideas. Um, this app is all about making it 
easy and family friendly. So we, we want your feedback. Um, and on that note, we are changing up our, our pricing model coming in April. So from now until the end of March, we have a introductory rate um, that we're doing half off of our retail and no subscription. So starting in April, when we add some of our new uh, history and broadband uh, features, then we're going to switch over to the subscription model. So you um, current users, uh, we would love for you to encourage family and friends to jump on with us now, um, get in on the introductory rate. That means that they buy the um, router and they get lifetime access to any of the features that we add into the, the app. Um, and we're working on our native app, so that should be coming hopefully in April as well. So I think that's all I've got for updates on my end. All right. Well, I, I want to jump in here real quick and say, so uh, I didn't I didn't get clearance for this earlier, guys. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, ask forgiveness instead of permission on this one. But the demo that we've been using is actually the it's a first iteration, I guess you could say a beta of our native app. So um, we've got the ball in motion for that. Uh, we know a few users have asked for it. And we're looking to really simplify your login process and also uh, the flow, you know, so you know when you tap the button, you can see uh, exactly what's going on. You don't have that address bar at the top or, or at the bottom if you're on Safari, you don't have that menu bar down there. So this is actually a, a first iteration of our native app in the works real time right here. So uh, that's definitely coming down the pipe. And also, like Candace was saying, you know, we're, we're about to go to subscription because we are starting to provide those subscription level services, uh, which of, cur of course incurs a cost for us as well. Um, so that's why we're transitioning to this, this subscription model. It was actually on the roadmap from the beginning. Um, so for those that haven't purchased, but have been thinking about it, now is the time to do it because April 1st, we're going to start that subscription and anybody that gets it now will be grandfathered. Um, also, if you already have Aries, this is a great time to get, get one for uh, family and friends. So please take advantage of that offer because uh, that's going away just here in a couple weeks and then we'll be going to the subscription. Now, I say that and it's not threatening because I feel like the subscription is going to be absolutely worth it. We've compared it to other products on the market that are similar to what we have. Uh, we feel we have a great price point. Uh, that's going to provide a service that actually exceeds what you can get from um, all the other similar devices. We haven't found anybody that's doing exactly what we do. So we feel like we're still standing uh, at the top of the mountain uh, in that area. But yeah, guys, please take advantage of that now. And if not, we welcome you aboard to our subscription service later. It would be awesome. And uh, Candice, one more thing. I think there was a talk of a video testimonial that you might have done with one of our beta users. Yes, um, I don't think I quite have it live out on the the blog yet, but we've gotten um, we sat down with one of our users and and talked about how she uses Aries and how she balances family life with technology. And um, so, yeah, as a quick little video that if you're interested to hear from people other than us, <laughs> how <laughs> Aries actually works for them. Um, Take a look. Well, I'll actually probably get that out on the blog today, as a matter of fact. All right. Look forward to it. Speaking of the blog, let me just go ahead and give you guys a glimpse of where you find that. Um, we've got Aries.net, which is our main site uh, for people that really aren't familiar with it, uh, with the product and the system. So that still stands. But as uh, we've mentioned before, we do have the social.aries.net. And that's where you can find our blog. We've got a resource page we're building up. Uh, we can also transition to our help center there where we've got some frequently asked questions, uh, getting started tips, pro tips, best practices, that type of thing. So we've got all that going on over there. And uh, of course, in the blog, we'll have the testimonials uh, listed there along with all of our other blog posts. And so, you know, just for clarity, the, the blog is really a, another means for us to kind of provide resources to everyone, um, not just about what we're doing with the app, but you know, some other tips, like for example, this latest post that we have here from Candace is a few simple ways to keep your home internet connection secure. 
and these are tips that are useful even if you don't have Aries. These are just general tips. Uh, I will say, though, for a lot of these things that we display, uh, we're doing that for you in Aries, so you don't have to. Uh, but if you're not ready to pull the trigger on Aries and you still want to be able to secure your network, we're going to be providing some resources and some tips to help you guys do that. All right, Mark, anything else uh, you'd like to speak to, bud? No, I guess um, you know maybe I'll say that we've been to a couple of trade shows or conventions over the last month. And our most common frequently asked question is, will Aries work nationwide? And the answer to that question is yes, absolutely. We work on any internet service provider that provides you service over what we call an ethernet cable. So as long as you plug in a cable to get your, your internet access, we will um, work with that service provider. If you do have what's called PPPoE, um, we've got a little bit of a uh, custom setup that we have to do that just takes five minute phone call, but 99% uh, we've got 99% coverage of, of service providers in the US. Um, we already work with Verizon, Comcast, AT&T, um, local telcos that are rural, and uh, we don't have any trouble uh, serving your your needs. The, you know, to, to that end, Mark, um, speaking with one of our, our users, I was helping them do their setup, and then we followed back, uh, followed up with them a couple weeks later. And we found out that this was kind of a common thing between a lot of our beta testers. Uh, they were still working on the router slash modem that they got from their internet service provider two, three, sometimes four years ago. So just simply installing Aries and doing nothing else gave them a huge boost on their network that just blew their minds. I mean, they were literally, uh, you know, hundreds of times slower than they are now with Aries. And that's even without setting up users and setting up the, the, the profiles, uh, any of that stuff. So you never know. I mean, you might still be living in the stone age with that, that uh, ISP issued router or device. So Definitely want to uh, think about that as well as far as the upgrade uh, opportunity. Great point. All right, so I think we've covered it all. I don't see any questions uh, right now in either of the chats. Do you see anything in Facebook, Candace? I don't, I don't see anything. All right, awesome. Well guys, if you're watching the recorded version of this and you do have questions, please don't hesitate to drop a question in the comments. Uh, we will get back to you on that. We monitor those all the time, 24-7. Also, we have the chat link on our website. Let me pop that back up real quick for demonstration purposes. On our website, aries.net, we've got a little chat link. Oh, where'd it go? All right. I probably got some uh, technical difficulties again. But at the <laughs> bottom right of the web page, there's going to be a little bubble. And it's a little smiley face. It's orange. And that is our chat link. Uh, you can send us a message there and we respond to those really quick. Uh, and also, if you are a current user, don't forget that we have the chat section in the app. And you know what? I want to just take a moment and run through that real quick. We're we're going to be working on the UI, as uh, Candice and Mark said. Uh, one of the things we want to do is make this chat uh, more accessible throughout the pages. So you don't have to necessarily navigate all the way to your support section. But for now... You always go to the chat now button here on your support tab uh, under settings. And then you, you will have a history of all the chats that you've had with us in the past. And you can start a new conversation down here on the bottom. And we will get back to you incredibly quickly on any of these chat messages. Uh, it's there for you for feedback, for questions, anything that you want to chat with us about. Even if you want to drop a testimonial in there or you can go to our Amazon store, but more to come on that. We'll talk about that another time. All right, guys. Well, that's all I have. Anything else from you guys, Mark Kins? Have a great day. All right. Thank you guys a lot for your time. We appreciate it. And we will see everyone again next week on webinar Wednesday, 1230 Central Standard Time. Sounds Goodbye. good. Thank you. Bye.